All right, we'll do the uh, SmackDown TV review, and then we'll do the spoilers for next week afterwards. Why did they tape next week tonight? Because uh, they're in London this week, and they didn't want to... Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the SmackDown crew is in uh, in the O2 Arena in London this this Friday, and um, they didn't... I think because Raw is in the United States, like it's it's not a full-blown UK tour where everybody goes. It's really just SmackDown and, and um, Orton and Riddle are going, though. So Orton and Riddle will probably miss um, next week's Raw, um, you know, which is the Raw before, you know, whatever. But um, but they'll be on the SmackDown show since uh, they did the contract signing on the uh, on the the tape show. So they started with the contract signing. It was Charlotte and Ronda, and uh, the the uh, table got tipped over. The whole deal. Uh, Gulak is out there, and Ronda puts a beating on him, puts him in the arm bar, signs a contract as he's screaming, I quit. And uh, this, as we will uh, talk about here in a second, leads to a beat the clock challenge with Charlotte and Ronda next week, who can make the uh, other person quit fastest. So that's next week. We had uh, Xavier so, Woods. So, so it looks like Sonya Deville's back as a wrestler. And Gulak might be Adam Pierce's, um, you know, other guy. They did essentially Not, say he was an intern right now, so he's in training to replace Sonya Deville. Yeah, but his role clearly is to be a comedy goof. Yes, um, and he's good at it. You know, I mean, and, and maybe this will look. He hasn't been on TV at all for a long, long time, except in background scenes. So, and he can talk. Um, you know, I mean, obviously beating up women's not going to be, you know, great for whatever, but he's not in that role as a wrestler anyway. So it's like, you know, it's it's not hurting credibility of a guy who is never used anyway. So whatever. Um, I actually liked the idea of Ronda having him in the armbar and signing the contract on, on him. I thought that was kind of cool. We had Xavier beating Butch with the springboard into a small package. And then uh, Butch freaked out afterwards, and he goes into the crowd. He beats up an alleged security guy. He and just runs off through the crowd, and he has been uh, lost again, they said. And yeah. this week, we never saw him again. Doing a segment with Aaliyah. She's back. So she's gushing over Ricochet, and they're having this horribly fake dialogue. And then uh, Jinder Mahal walks up, and, and uh, he's about to challenge... Ricochet for a title match, and Ricochet says he'll take on anybody. And so Shanky steps up, and so it is Ricochet versus Shanky for the title next week's show. We had uh, Gunther beating Teddy Goods, just squashed him, killed him. It was enjoyable. It's hard to not have an enjoyable Gunther squash match. Powerbombed him, pinned him. That was fun. Then uh, they had a segment backstage with Riddle, Orton, and McIntyre. And they're talking about uh, uh, basically Orton and Drew McIntyre obviously have had issues in the past, but apparently they've gotten past them and they're on the same page. And as they walk away, Sami Zayn is is uh, in the background and he's he's got this plan. Yep. Zaya Lee is apparently a heel. Yep, yep, yep. Um, they had tried that out in some dark matches, I guess. And she literally had two weeks as a baby face. She vanished off the face of the earth and now she's back as a heel. Yeah, and I mean, they looked like they were going to give her a push, and then just dropped it cold. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't like she wasn't getting over because she didn't even have time to. You know what I mean? Yeah. She didn't really have time to fail. They just dropped it. We had Riddle beating Jay Uso, and I like uh, this match a lot. Yep, yeah, good match. Roman Reigns watching backstage, and of course he's he's furious. By the way, two small package finishes in a row here, so. Well, with the, with Woods, it's like his finish is now the small package. Sure, you, you know. That's <laughs> but we like still his... had two small packages in a row. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know they. Um, I think I think the next show has it too. Yeah, that happens. So uh, Roman Reigns very disappointed, and uh, that led to a segment later with Sammy. We had a Sasha Banks Naomi interview segment, and uh, they're talking about how they, you know, they. Uh, Let's see, they talk about they, much. They, they, they beat up. They beat up. Uh, they beat up uh, Rhea and Liv so bad that they split up. 
And they beat up Carmel so bad she left on a honeymoon. So I guess they only had two teams they could run down. So then out comes Natty and uh, and uh, Shayna Baszler, and apparently they'll be the next challengers for the tag team titles. Yep. Happy Corbin tried to uh, get Madcap Moss back. Madcap Moss wanted nothing to do with him. They'll be wrestling at the pay-per-view. Madcap Moss did a joke saying that there's as good a chance of me getting back with you as you getting a full head of hair. And then he starts doing that laugh. And, it, and all I could think of is, you know, for whatever reason, at least week one, Madcap Moss was kind of over, you know, um, doing this thing. But a baby face should not be telling really bad jokes. So, um, you know, I mean, I think, you know, he could be like our, tr- you know, it's like you can be our truth level doing this. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, it does limit, you know, your upward mobility to a degree. And um, I mean, I watch this guy. I mean, he's got a great physique, you know, and he he's like so explosive in the ring. Like he's a like one of the best athletes they've got on the roster. And I think you can, I think there's something, I mean, I, 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 he's, he's, he feels like you can do something with him. Like <laughs> You could absolutely do something with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and they're going to, but I think that, again, not right now, because if, if you, you know, but, but at some point, he's got to ditch the Joker gimmick and, and have another gimmick. Or at least if he does the jokes, there better be better jokes, because... <laughs> Bad jokes, never good for a baby face. Well, he beat Angel in two minutes, and it was exactly like last week. Basically the exact same match. Big comeback, hit his move, pinned him. And then afterwards, Corbin ran down, attacked him from behind, and stole his trophy. Yep. Uh, about that. We had a long segment with Sami Zayn in Roman's locker room, which actually was awesome, because Sami Zayn is just such a fantastic, slimy character. And he's in there, and he's acknowledging Roman, and he's telling the story about RK Bro, and they'd said bad things about the whole family, and that he's got this match tonight, and, you know, he really wants to prove he's not afraid of, of Drew. So it'd be really great if they were out there to help him tonight. And he walks away, and when he's gone, Reigns buys his story. He's furious. He tells the Usos to go out there and and take his name out of their mouths. We had third part of the Lacey Evans story. It was great. Yeah, oh, God, if they great. dropped the ball on this, which... It, it was know. a great segment. She was, she, you know, yeah, she delivers it well. Um, I'm not a fan of the music, but I I think she's she's been really good in this. And, um, yeah. Uh, well, in any other promotion on this planet, this would be impossible to screw up. I've seen people screw up a lot worse, a lot better than this. Yeah. Um, but... I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, when again, when when they first gave her that big heel push, it, the design always was to eventually make her a baby face with with this stuff. I don't know why it took them this many years, but um, you know, because I remember what first I was like, why are you pushing her? And it's like she's got a great story. She's got a great look. She's she's you know, and all this. And it's like, yeah, I know the story, but it's like you're not telling it because well, she's a heel. You know, and it's like, yeah, okay, I made that makes sense. So anyway, now it's the time for the big. But I think that they, I think they thought that she could be like the superstar heel because of the look and everything like that and the gimmick. And um, you know, now, you know that uh, now she's doing the the other gimmick. So we we shall see. But uh, uh, she sh- she should get a big push off of this. Um, the na- you know, I mean, the thing is, is I think Ronda's getting the title because it'd be really bad for Ronda to lose an I quit match. So I think she's getting the title. But Lacey really, like, as a baby face, her natural opponent is Charlotte, you know, because Charlotte's the top heel woman on that SmackDown brand. Mm, things can happen. But, uh, and, and, you know, and again, maybe, you know, that's for down the line. And so the main event was uh, Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn in a lumberjack match. And I was watching an old Raw, and I saw Shawn Michaels and Hacksaw Jim Duggan in a lumberjack match, which actually was a pretty damn good match because Shawn Michaels was on fire. And uh, 
they get thrown outside. The lumberjacks are beating them up. Everything, blah blah blah. And all of a sudden, the lumberjacks got in the ring and started brawling. It was a it was a disqualification in a lumberjack match. And I thought, how the fuck do you have a disqualification in a lumberjack match? What a stupid finish. Well, in this match, you get a count out. We got a count out in a lumberjack match. That was something. The lumberjacks. Three, so that's three weeks in a row of count out finishes, which in 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 it does build up a cage match. So in a sense, the directive at the end, there is a logic to it. But to me... Oh, yeah, there's a logic to it. But that point of the lumberjack match was you can't have a count out in a lumberjack match because you have lumberjacks. I know. I know. And in fact, they have a lumberjack match and Adam Pearce comes out, and these weren't his exact words, but it was something to the effect of, you know, I never thought I'd actually see a count out in a lumberjack match. But since I did, next week you will be in a cage match. Which, by the way, I mean, the first thing I thought was, this better not be escape the cage rules, because if we got three weeks of count outs to lead to a match where you can only win by running away, I'm going to be pretty pissed off. Well, the thing is, is that in WWE cage matches, they didn't say special rules, so one of the rules is escape the cage. Well, yeah, but I mean, I will say that Drew McIntyre, you know, he was he was very abundantly clear screaming the announcers, no way out! Yeah. So, uh, anyway... Yeah, we had a count out in a lumberjack match, and it was stupid. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them, the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.